probably three months, maybe two months. It's just because I've been so busy with work and the uh, last video I put out was uh, when I first got to Arizona. So it was really exciting. I had a couple new toys to play with and uh, and yeah, that was, that was it. But um, a little bit of a bad news for me. I figured out that if you moved to Arizona and you want to hunt, uh, you can get, you know, your license and registration for your vehicle. You can have your address updated. All of those things. But you are not considered a resident until you have lived in Arizona for six months, I think. So you don't get the resident rate. So I moved right before mule deer, elk, javelina, all of those seasons. And I figured out that uh, I'm really only interested in archery right now, archery hunting, um, bow hunting, but a an over-the-counter tag for a mule deer was like $350 which is wild. Um, I mean, the good news is that there's a lot of freedom for, you know, bow hunting here in Arizona, and you can buy over-the-counter tags for pretty much any animal, you know, at any time from, like, just the local, I think, Big Five store out here. So, Big Five Sporting Goods, I think, is what it was, which is where I went to. But at any rate, all of those animals, those big game, which javelina is apparently considered big game out here, those non-resident rates for over-the-counter tags were just astronomical. So with moving here, I I made the decision not to uh, not to do any of that. So plus, you know, I didn't have any time to do any scouting. Um, talk to local archery shops about where to hunt. You know. Um, no time to prepare anything for a hunt if I would have wanted to go on one. So I made the decision, it was a smarter decision to just wait till next year, maybe do a little bit of exploring, check out different zones and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, get more financially stable here. I hope you can hear me with all that wind. Probably not. But... At any rate, yeah, that's an update. That's a little bit of an update on me. Let's take another shot. But what that's allowed me to do is just get back into archery, get back into practicing with my form. I've corrected a whole bunch of stuff. I've fiddled with my with the way I hold the bow, with the way I hold the release, um, my anchor, and I feel really, really good right now. And I, and and most importantly, like I actually feel pretty consistent coming off of a long layoff where I haven't shot in a while, and you know my first arrow goes pretty much where I want it to, the second arrow and third arrow, because I, I tend to shoot in threes. They tend to, you know, go in the vicinity. Now, obviously, if I've had a long layoff, the uh, fatigue starts to set in, like, pretty quick, and so your first couple ends are really, really good, and then it just goes way downhill. So, I mean, that getting in shape for, you know, shooting a long, for a long time, with a lot of rounds is, is something that you definitely have to work on and that goes away so um or your strength rather goes away over time so um you know I, I figure that the key the key to my success is probably going to be and I've, I've done a lot of stuff to cut down the time on my shot 
and it's it's not necessarily rushing but it's it's stuff where it really really cuts down on the time between when you draw the bow and when you release or when your release goes off in my case with the with the hinge so what i what i what i used to do is like bring the pin down once i had gotten into full anchor i don't really do that anymore i try to keep the pin on the target the entire time um and then from there um what i used to do is the thing that you know a lot of things uh, a lot of people learn from a ton of archers out there where they fiddle with their they fiddle with the string you know they tap it to their nose a whole bunch of times and i learned i learned from from somebody um that it's just just get it take your time in getting it there you don't have to bring it up immediately and start fiddling with it but just take your time make a make a make a j stroke like sort of a j like that and then just bring it up until the uh string hits your nose and then just keep it there um it feels it feels a lot more comfortable to me so um you know that's reduced a whole bunch of time um, slow makes smooth, smooth makes fast in that, in that case. So, um, and then from there, basically I'm ready to, um, I'm ready to start pulling rotation. And then, uh, the, the key to my shot is when I, um, I know I've had a good shot when, um, my elbow goes back like that and the, and the bow comes forward and then goes slightly to the left. Um, just because that's the way, um, it, it's sort of, your, your, your elbow shouldn't come back like that. It should kind of go behind you, you know, like that, uh, not at too much of an angle, but that's, that's just when I know I've gotten off a good shot. So, um, I go back and forth between pulling with two fingers and three fingers. I just think that three fingers give me, gives me a lot more control. Um, sometimes with the two fingers, I feel that there's, there's too much friction on the release between my finger and the release. And it just, it, it all of a sudden has a tendency to go to slip, um, cause it's gotten caught on my finger with friction. So, um, three fingers makes it a whole lot easier to control that release and just focus on, you know, getting that good rotation and, and, and pulling against that back wall. So this is just, that's just stuff that I've worked on. Um, now that I know that I, I'm not going to hunt this year. So, um, looking forward to next year. I'll tell you what though, I am very much enjoying my time out here. It is one of the most astonishing and most beautiful places I've ever been to. Um, just looking up every single day and seeing the mountains and, you know, just the vastness that is absolutely awesome. Um, and then just being able to go off-road and shoot my boat wherever I want to. I mean, that's there's nothing like that. You can't get that in the Midwest. Um, I think I think I have found a home in Arizona. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be where I am right now in this particular location, but um, definitely, I, I feel like this is where I was meant to be. Um, this really hot, arid climate. Um, I I just really love it. It's it's not really hot and airy right now. It's probably about 78 degrees. Um, you know, but. There's not a cloud in the sky. Um, and the sun's shining down on my face. So I'm definitely enjoying this. Um, I don't know, I don't know when, but I think I may move again. And that's just gonna depend on my job and if I even want to continue in the industry that I'm in right now, because what I'm finding is, you know, in, in, the, in the past, I, I always liked working for, in the industry that I worked in because there's really good job security and, you know, 
there's definitely a structure to it. So, you know, getting a job where, you know, you don't really have to worry about job security. Um, you know, you're not working for yourself. You're working for, um, you know, communities and stuff like that. You're not, um, you know, you, all, you have somebody to report to, which, um, you know, I, I used to, I think in my younger days, I used to really, really like because that, that could give you guidance with what to do. But I think right now what I've found is I've sort of outgrown that and I never thought that I could like start my own business. I, I never thought that I was smart enough. I never thought that, um, you know, I never thought that I could do it, but I'm starting to think that that might be the way that my future has to go because I mean, I'm looking around and in the industry that I'm in and I'm seeing smarter people really not know how to, you know, look into the future. And, you know, when it, when a dumbass like me can, can look at something, observe something and see that something needs to change and either that person can't see it or refuses to see it. I mean, you know, and that's pretty much something that I've had to, I've had to deal with with the last couple of years. And it's really hard to get, to get something changed in the industry that I'm in. And, um, I don't know. I think that working for myself, maybe start my own business, um, going, going freelance on a couple of things. Um, I've learned stuff in the last five or six years that I never thought that I would ever be able to do. And all it took was just motivation. I'm a huge believer in the fact, I think that um, anyone can learn anything. There just has to be, you just have to be motivated to do it. You just have to be motivated to learn it. Um, I never thought six years ago that I would be into cameras. I I couldn't even, I couldn't even edit a picture on my phone. It was just something that like was completely foreign to me and I never knew that I could do it. And then now I'm, I guess I'm putting together 16, although the last couple have been 30 minute videos, um, you know, picking your location, shooting, not necessarily writing a script cause I don't do that cause I can't stick to a script anyways. I just tend to ramble on, but um, you know, doing the entire production process for a, you know, 15 to 30 minute video, just talking about archery and exploring and, uh, and then color grading at the end, cutting it up, uh, into, you know, in, into clips that are manageable, color grading it, exporting it to YouTube and, you know, really making it look I think almost decent. Um, I never thought that I'd be able to do that. And here we are, here I am six years later in Arizona making a video while standing in the middle of a canyon, not the Grand Canyon, uh, but a canyon here. Um, it's awesome. And I never thought I could do that six years ago. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking now being my own boss, which I thought maybe never would have been possible, might be possible now. And, uh, you know, there's still stuff that I would have to learn about being, being my own boss. Like, I, I think stuff that, you know, stuff that I don't get to do now, um, I'd be able to do. Um, but I'd have to, I'd have to be really, really good at, uh, you know, sticking to a schedule, really planning a whole bunch of stuff out, which I've gotten way better in the last couple of years. In fact, like, you know, I have to get people to come up. I have to get people to, uh, you know, keep up with me in a lot of aspects. Um, but I think that might be the way to go. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it could. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's just a fatigue of, you know, I, I could see so much more improvement in the industry that I'm in 
and I just don't see it. I, I don't see it happening. And a lot of the improvements that I've tried to, you know, I've talked to people about instituting and, you know, saying like, hey, you could, you if you if you made these changes and committed to this, it would save you X amount of dollars or it would save you X amount of time. And also, we're missing out on revenue streams. We're missing out on, you know, we're missing out on awareness about the service that we provide um, by not doing these things. And it, it just seems impossible to impossible to get to change. Um, and the, the problem is, is that uh, I've gone from, you know, I, I went from never moving on from this one job that I have and, st and I stuck around way too long for it. Um, and then in the last, you know, four or five years, I've gone from job to job to job because I've sort of outgrown the, and, and gotten a little bit less naive about loyalty in, in my particular industry. And, you know, some of the things that you, you want to change, you, you really can't, it's, it's not up to you. And, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm about tired of that and I'm about done with that. Um, and it might be, it might be time to start getting into business for myself. So I've always been a workaholic, um, which I think would be good for, you know, starting my own business, but I don't know. I may wait here for things to pick up or slow or slow down, I guess, in my industry, but, um, and then reevaluate, but definitely start a plan for what I want to do in the future for myself because I've, I've never really thought about that before. It's always been job, get my job done, and then, um, you know, moving out here, I've really started to think about all the stuff that I want to do in my life, and, you know, I've, I felt like I've missed out, so um, I, may, I may try to do that here pretty soon, maybe within the next year, but um, right now things are going pretty well. I moved out here, nearly bankrupted myself to move out here and you know the with the with the scenery I I have zero regrets for that so this is awesome and um, I pretty much want to stay out here for the rest of my life. I've I think I just I think I decided that my first trip down here I I pretty much decided that this is where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. This this state this um, out west here where there's views everywhere and you wake up and the mountains change color every 30 seconds with the sun coming up and then the exact same thing happens when the sun goes down so um, yeah this is an incredibly beautiful place and uh, loaded with opportunity and I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna shoot my shot so probably a long video with me talking a lot and uh, not a lot of action but um, I'm excited for the future, and I want to do a whole lot of big things, and I think that the job I have right now is kind of holding me back from doing those, so um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to figure it out, and I'm determined to make my life mean something, and that sounded really terrible, really, really awful, but... Um, I'm, I'm determined to do more than I'm doing right now. I'm determined to chase fulfillment in, in what I do. And I'm excited to, I'm excited to start that journey. And I'm going to be thinking about a whole lot for the next probably year. So sort of a melancholy end to the video so I've got my drone out here so enjoy some drone footage of northern Arizona see you next time